Didn't they do a great job? Our New Testament lesson for today comes from Colossians 1, verses 1 through 20. Listen now to the word of God. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel, that has come to you just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself to all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've been thinking lately about some of the things I have learned through social media. Facebook is about the only contact I have with some of my old high school buddies. I know that those folks back in high school, they were Christians back then, and I know that they are still Christians today because uh, they post a lot of uh, professions of faith online. But um, I grew up with these people. (laughs) I know their dark side. Uh, I remember what they did on weekends, and I remember some of the things we all did together back in 1972. Yes, that was the year I graduated high school. How many were born back then? Anybody? Okay. I shouldn't ask. But I got to tell you, when I read some of their stuff on Facebook, I think they haven't changed a bit, a lot of them. They haven't grown or matured. The folks who were lazy or promiscuous or dishonest or racist back in the 1970s, they're still that way today. And it shows when they post things on Facebook along with demonstrating their Christian faith. I'm convinced that when they say they are Christians, they are Christians. But I recognize that they have not grown as spiritually as probably our Lord would have desired. Now, I think about my old high school buddies when I read Paul's letter to the Colossians. 
Paul has heard that this church is struggling to keep its faith pure from outside influences, and they're struggling to mature in their faith. They've not grown the way they should have grown. And Paul is writing them this letter to rebuke them. But he doesn't do it harshly. He does it very kindly. He starts by praising the Colossians for the good that is going on in their church because there is good in their church. They may not have grown as much as Paul would have liked, but there are good things going on, and he praises that. But then he zeroes in on what he really wants to say in verse 10. He tells them to live a life worthy of Christ. Now, I think that's easier said than done. How do we do that? You know, when Paul wrote his letter to the uh, Colossian church, uh, he wrote it in Greek, and in Greek, live a life is really one word that means walk. And in fact, some English translations like the King James Bible renders it, walk worthy of the Lord. We can't just talk the talk. We have to walk the walk as Christians. We can't just profess on Facebook or wear crosses around our neck or come to church and say that we're Christians. We, we got to live the Christian life, walk a life worthy of Christ. Now, most of us who are healthy and able to walk uh, physically do so on two legs, and Paul suggests when he, we need to walk spiritually with the Lord, we need to use two spiritual legs. Take a look at what he says in verse 10. We pray that you will live a life worthy of the Lord, and you may please him in every way, bearing good fruit, growing in the knowledge of God. One leg is bearing fruit, the other is knowledge of God. In other words, one leg is action the other one is knowledge and education. Think about education. Time and again, the Bible affirms the need for us to be educated and well-informed. Proverbs 1, verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And one of the things that's always been true in the Christian church is that we have valued education, knowledge, and understanding. Years ago, I served a church in Tennessee that was founded in 1779, oldest Presbyterian church in Tennessee. Uh, at least we think it was. There were five others who thought they were oldest, and we always had good chats among ourselves. But all of those early churches, when they established their, their church in the community, the first thing they did was to build a school. And the pastor was not just hired to preach. He was hired to be the teacher, the educator of the community. Tradition continues today. Our church has a college scholarship for the young people in our church and small blessings, child care, an excellent example of our desire to nurture people in knowledge. Um, we believe that knowledge is important. When we study calculus, we're not just studying numbers, we're learning the principles by which God holds the universe together and operates the universe. When we study astronomy, we're studying uh, about how God created and made this universe so beautiful. St. Paul once told his student Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. I think that was my dad's favorite Bible verse. I think that because he was always telling me in high school, study to show yourself approved by God. <laughs> you want to live or walk in a manner worthy of Christ, use your mind, study, learn, grow in the knowledge, and learn all you can about God's world and God's word. The other leg we walk on spiritually is action. Taking what you learn about God and putting it in action in daily living. In the words of Jesus and the apostles, bear good fruit. You know, you can grow a nice plant for all sorts of reasons, but if you're a farmer, you want that plant to produce some fruit or produce. Otherwise, it's useless to the farmer. God has planted us. We need to produce some decent fruit for him. 
Much of my life was spent in South Carolina. Some of the visitors may be able to catch a, an accent. I've been told I have an accent. I don't understand that. I talk like every Southerner I grew up with. And one of the things we used to do in the South, in South Carolina, was grow gardens. And I don't mean rose gardens. I mean gardens that you could eat at some point in the year. And we would plant corn and potatoes and peanuts and okra and squash and all sorts of things. And they would grow and they would bear fruit, as the Bible would say. And once in a while, though, I have to tell you that some of the plants I planted did not bear good fruit. Green beans, for example. One year, I planted lots of green beans. And because of the unusually dry weather and the deer were so prevalent in the woods that year, uh, they ate all the green beans. And I harvested one green bean. And I don't mean a whole plant. I mean one green bean. My wife thought it was ridiculous, but I cooked that one green bean. <laughs> By George, I was going to eat that green bean. You know, you got to be on a strict diet for that bean to be worth anything. God expects us to produce something in life, the fruit of good living. Now, we don't deserve or earn God's love that way, his salvation, his forgiveness. We get that freely from God by his grace and love. But having received God's grace and forgiveness, he expects us to change our life and live a life worthy of Christ, which means walking on two spiritual legs, one of which is bearing good fruit. Are you producing good fruit in your life? Do you show love to others? including the ones who may treat you badly, the ones who are just different in some way? Do you give generously to others, strangers you'll never see again? Do you give your time to the service of the community? You don't have to build a college or a school to bear good fruit. It's in the day-to-day -day living. Now, i got to tell you, I think the biggest problem that people out there have with those of us in here, the problem non-Christians have with Christians is they watch us and they see what we post on social media and they see how we live our lives and they don't see us living a life worthy of Christ. Because they see the way some of us act and behave and the things we post online. And they know that we don't have love for certain people in this world. And they can tell by the way we talk about them. And they see us talking about generosity, but they don't really see us doing anything. They see the fruit we bear. And they know we are crippled in our walk with the Lord. And Paul's words to the Colossians are God's word to us today. Live a life worthy of Jesus Christ. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might, power, dominion, and glory today and forever. Amen.